In this video, I will explain to you the water, nutrients, carbon and food nexus. Water, carbon and nutrients are required to produce food to feed our cities. The food that you consume every day contains energy. And this energy is required to keep you alive. It is associated to carbon in food, as carbon is the major component of fats and hydrocarbons that you eat. The food you consume also contains nutrients. One group of nutrients are the so-called essential macronutrients. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Nitrogen and phosphorus are essential elements in DNA, ATP, the energy mediator in the living cells, cell membranes and protein structures. Potassium is amongst other things essential to maintain the transport mechanisms in your cells. So these nutrients are essential for you, but they are also essential for all other forms of life including the crops and the livestock that become our food. So, to produce the crops for our cities, these nutrients are urgently required. If they are not supplied in sufficient quantities, agricultural yields will drop and food security is put at risk. For potassium, this is not so much of a problem, as it is abundant in the earth's crust. Similarly, nitrogen is abundant in the atmosphere and can be fixed from the air via natural processes or through man-made technologies, also known as the Haber-Boss process. This chemical process produces N fertilizers from atmospheric N, which is then applied to agricultural land, but it requires a lot of energy and fossil fuels. It is estimated that about 1% of the global energy use is actually used for fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere. Phosphorus, on the other hand, is a non-renewable resource and its availability is estimated to decline drastically in the coming decades. And what about carbon then? Carbon is not in short supply, because plants can fix it from the atmosphere using photosynthesis. But the carbon in the soil that these plants grow on can be a problem. Carbon in the soil is essential to maintain the soil structure and its properties. It increases the ability of the soil to hold nutrients and water and to resist erosion and to sustain the soil's natural biology, which is essential for crops to be, do, uh, to be resilient against pests. In this way, carbon is essential to maintain food production, to prevent water eutrophication, and to mitigate land degradation. And finally, of course, water. Water is the linking element between all the others. Water dominates all flows in the city when measured in weight. As you know, water becomes increasingly scarce around the world and in coastal regions, as you can see in this image. Furthermore, cities compete for water with agriculture, while agriculture is responsible for about 70% of the total global water use. It is often the demand of the cities that get priority. For instance, for drinking water production. Or for hydropower but also carbon, potassium, nitrogen and phosphorus that enter the city leave the city via the wastewater. So the challenge is one of recovery of these valuable components from so-called organic waste streams or biomass and to reuse them in agriculture for food production. Are you ready to join me to turn waste streams into resources? <laughs>